All right, man. How we doing? It's been How we a while. doing? I know. Chilling. Yeah. Football. <laughs> football's just kind of been, you know, all over for us. But we don't want to talk about football. We talk about football enough here. If only thing I'm going to say about football right now is th- this is the funny thing I'll say about the football. At least with the Giants. Me as a Giants fan right now, yeah, like last week, yeah, dude, Daniel Jones is good now. Oh, my God, the team looks great. Next week, what the f*** is going on here? Why is no one moving the ball well? What's going on? And then the next week's going to be like, oh, my God, the team looks great. And the following week, what the f***? What is, this is wrong the same with this team, team? that I'm watching? <laughs> Bipolar is shit. That's a Giants fan dude, for you. Dude, I was, uh, bro, that meme I sent you perfectly epitomized it dude, the one where so there's a guy with a wine glass and, a, and like Clorox bleach and he's just like get ready for the Giants game this is my drink <laughs> <laughs> I was like yeah that's 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 kind of you know and now we lost our you know franchise left tackle for the year he broke his foot are you serious yeah he, he broke his foot and he was playing on a broken foot all last game what a beast though yeah he, but that's the foot. thing it's like he did that last year he played on a problem he had throughout a few games and then finally got you know he had to just sit out so it's gonna happen again this year but this time he's out the whole year and i think the season's pretty much wrapped at this point because if you don't have a left tackle you're 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 chalked i mean i don't know i just i just think you're chalked as a team i'm just gonna say one thing about the steelers yeah just one if we fucking start russell wilson i'm going to lose my mind <laughs> I I'm putting my phone on D and D. I don't want anyone to talk to me. I'll tell you this though. No, you no. need a passer and Justin no. Fielding. That no. All right. No, I'm telling you this bluntly. I want you to go back and watch just little clips of that Steelers game against the Raiders. Yeah. If we have Russell Wilson in there. We lose that game. Yeah. And he gets sacked seven times. It could happen. Now, yeah. If he starts against the Jets. I mean, the Jets defense is a little hype this year. They're yeah, not but, all that. But so. Quentin Williams is still that guy all the time. I would I would think you guys still beat the Jets because the offense is I, a mess I'm, there. But I'm very scared. That's going to be an interesting game. When, but, what you know, the Jets game? will jet. So. What time is that game? Is that primetime? Sunday night game. Sunday night? Yeah, yeah, okay. Jets have every primetime game in the book this year. Bro, you know we got stupid. two Monday night games this week? Yeah. I didn't know that. I think it's because there's... I think the Tampa game is the reason why, because I think Tampa is one of the two Monday night games. Yeah, that's weird because there's, just, well, there's I mean, they a did lot of teams on the bye. By they did just get hurt by a, by a hurricane. Oh, yeah, So true. maybe the game is just like kind of moved around. Yeah, I, I don't know. This is all just speculation. I, I could just be either. blowing hot air here, but. Yeah, I just, yeah. I don't know. But anyway. Anyway, bro, I got some news for you. Now, yeah, I got see. no credible sources. Don't ask me for my MLA citations or whatever the fuck people are calling it now. Okay. Apparently... What? We're getting new Uzi music soon. Apparently, so album or no? Album. Okay. Eternal Take 2. Apparently there's like a credible source guy, even though I just said no MLA citations, but there's a guy who like apparently Uzi like filmed a trailer for it, like yeah. kind of what he did with Pink Tape. Mm-hmm. And the guy was on set like talking about it. And he was like, yeah, like they just finished wrapping it up. Like it should be coming soon. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dude. Dude, if he, I mean, it's been a minute. Since he's released the album, when was the last uh, one? Last year? Yeah, I think last July. Yeah, that's a. I mean, that's a while for an artist who's kind of at his. I wouldn't say he's but at I, his peak. I but. want. I want. I like that though. Go away. Go away. Don't be in the spotlight all the time. Come back and just give us a perfect project. I'm still convinced that there are certain artists that have only that have given a lot of quality. I was having this conversation with somebody, and I was like, Little Uzi has two classic albums. Yeah. And anyone who tells you differently is just a hater or just doesn't like Uzi. Like, Love is Rage 2. I don't think there's any discussion about it. I'm going to put EA in there. I think those two albums are classics. Yeah. I would agree. For sure. I think his earlier stuff's a little better than Eternal Tape, but. Well, those are more like mixtapes. Yeah. You know? I guess they're not full albums, but they got. I mean, I would still consider it. Yeah. Like, if we're going by like every music that he's ever produced, I think the perfect love tape is Uzi's greatest project. Even okay. though I haven't listened to it in probably six or seven months, but whenever you listen to it, it's like if somebody were to come up to me and say, "Hey, I've never listened to Little Uzi before because I yeah. live under a rock." Yeah. What out? What should I start with? I'd say Perfect Love Tape. I yeah. go Perfect Love Tape, Love Is Rage Two, Uzi Vs the World, um, the first one. Yeah. And then EA, and then whatever you want else. I throw Red and Yellow in there, but there's certain songs on Red and Yellow that are not that good. Like Glock in My Purse is not good, <laughs> but. Oh, another thing is apparently we're getting the last Juice World album. Yeah, know? that's what you were mentioning to me. 
Now, how do you know it's the last? What would you hear about that? Because he definitely has so much, you know, yeah, I mean, unreleased stuff, as does Mac Miller, as does all these artists that pass away yeah. at a young age. So it's like, but then again, do you even want it? I mean, f- for your case, you're a Juice World fan. I understand you kind of want this stuff to come out. I'm more on the side of like, listen, I get that the music should be shared with everyone, but they're doing this for money at the end of the day and juice world's not around anymore so it's like all right someone's kind of making money off of his name for no reason again and that's where i'm starting to think yeah like maybe we shouldn't be releasing this stuff but at the same time if they were to release it and like it's just released like on soundcloud or something and no one's making money off of it i'm all for it but we just don't live in that world nowadays so i personally would be like all right let's just enjoy what juice had he's gone now you know and let's just enjoy what he's already produced and has has out. So, but I don't know. I know your opinion is probably different, but that's just mine. So I used to have the same opinion. As yeah, you. I thought you know he's gone. You can't have his touch. But yeah, I understand. I I understand where you're coming from, and I was that same way. But if his estate is okay with it, like if his family, yeah, his family's if his different. Family yeah, if his family's okay with, this, yeah, that's, that's I can live with that. That's true. I didn't also, think about I that. will never complain. Like there are songs that I listen to on unreleased songs where I'm like, please, please, my, like for instance, one of the songs that's rumored to be on it. I don't know if I've ever sent you this song. It's called Rental. Oh my god. I don't think I heard it. Oh my god. It's good. Yeah. Okay. And the reason I think it's gonna be on that project is obviously people have been, you know, rumor mills about like the track list and everything, but I obviously have it on SoundCloud and yeah. I have an entire playlist just dedicated to like unreleased Jews, Uzi, Drake. Well, I have one unreleased Drake song, but all like the unreleased stuff that I find. Yeah. I have it all on one playlist and rental, every time I add a, a new version of rental to it, it gets taken down. And oh. normally that means that like it might be coming out. Soon. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. I want to look at the camera when I say this. Little Uzi, I know you probably will not will not watch this, will not listen to it, whatever. <laughs> because who the fuck are we to you? But please, please, Scarecrow, Memories, Bankroll, not the one you have with Future. The one is just you. And um, I think it's called like Block Is Hot. The one I sent today. Those four songs just. Please, please put them on Apple Music, please. Anyway, um, yeah. So when it comes to like the Juice World stuff, if his estate is okay with it, I, I'm fine with it. I had this conversation with my dad, and he made a great point. And he said to me, "Well, think of it like this: the Beatles. The, a lot of the Beatles have been dead for, or two of the Beatles have been dead for a long time now. They still mm-hmm. re-released new music and remastered versions of their music. Now, is that wrong? Remastering's different, that? though." But, you, I but know like you, you, you get like the general point. Like they're gone. They can't like you know touch the music the way they want to anymore. Yeah. But they're still like they're benefiting from that. You know. I, I guess. I I guess the way I I'm phrasing is kind of retarded, but whatever. Um. Yeah. So the um. Yeah, man. So I think we're gonna be eating good. Oh. And apparently we're getting a Kendrick Lamar album soon. Well, that I'm not surprised with. I'm not either. Apparently, I don't know. I he's don't... doing a Super Bowl, right? Yes. Or, yeah, so that makes sense. I think he'll bring out Lil Wayne. I don't think he's dumb enough to not nah. bring out Lil Wayne. But... You think he has a song with him, though, coming out? Fucking Problems. Oh. I love bad bitches. I'm a fucking well, problem. that. Well, I'm thinking a new one, I guess, not an old new one. New one? I mean, they have Mona Lisa together. Yeah, I forgot about that one, too. You know? Okay. But, dude... Now listen, this is all just me being me, like the petty side of me, and I know Kendrick is pretty petty too. Drake's birthday is in October. <laughs> what better way to say fuck you to Drake? He's gonna go out for him again on his birthday. <laughs> I don't know That'd what Drake's actual birthday is, but I know it because he's always like October's very own, October's very own. Yeah, that's literally what OVO means, October's yeah, yeah. very own. Anyway, I was like, dude, if I was a petty motherfucker. I am a petty motherfucker. I would drop on Duke's hey, birthday. That makes sense. Low key, but that makes sense. I also think he probably would want to cl- uh, drop closer to like the Super Bowl. Like it yeah, wouldn't surprise thinking, me if he really. drops in like late November, early December. Yeah, I don't know what time they usually drop stuff. Like I know there's always the before summer stuff, mm. which is obvious, but 
I don't remember any big album being dropped like in the fall. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I guess it's a good possibility. But yeah, because the Super Bowl is coming up, that's probably good. I got time. another thing I wanna I wanna talk to you about. It's like what? fresh. So I'm on I'm on Twitter, right? I'm trying to get back onto Twitter because for a long time Twitter Twitter still is a cesspool of just a kebabble of fuckery. It's freedom of speech though. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, yeah, let's say that. So I'm on and I see like Travis Scott as like a concert. Yeah. And it's like the guy on the video is like new Travis Scott snippet and blah blah blah. Dude, the snippet is apple pie. You know? What I'm oh saying? yeah, I of course. Yeah, that's an OG song. People think it's unreleased. What? I'm like, who's thinking that? The motherfucker who posted the video. And the best part is, I'm like, okay, people are probably what clowning him in the comments. But yeah, I'm thinking like people are clowning this guy in the comments because. Rodeo is going to be – oh, my God. Rodeo is 10 years old. Rodeo's going to be 10 years old next year. Oh, my God. Anyway, I'm like, that song came out on Rodeo. Yeah. Are these people not listening to his entire catalog? How can you be a Travis Scott fan and not know fucking apple pie? That's dude, So what? I go in the comments, right? Okay. People are like, yo, he needs to drop this. He needs to drop this. I've never heard this. This shit's fire. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like – are you sure it wasn't like a remix or something? No, like it was literally like I put it up and it was just a whole like, you know, the, the piano in the beginning. The dun, 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 dun. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. I'm like, I'm like, I might just start doing that now just to get people just pissed off on Twitter. I might just start like listening to a snippet of a song and being like, yo, dude, this Kendrick Lamar song is fire. <laughs> and I'll put like fucking humble on there or something just to see what people say. Oh my God. That's how like is this some guy who. Is popular on the I'm, at first. I was like, dude, X or, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I mean, he's got like 50k, but okay. I was like, dude, he's trolling. And then I look at the comments, I'm like, oh my god, everyone just oh has god, no these, clue. These guys are serious. I'm like, when did you start listening to that Travis Scott at fucking Astro World? Yeah, and I'm like, Astro World's a good, a good, a good album, but the two albums before that are Never. also masterpieces, yeah. Yeah, Travis Scott has not been in the news for a long time now. But People give him shit for not releasing from Astro World to now, but I'm like, well, you guys there's do a understand. Reason. <laughs> you guys do understand that Travis put out a, an album every year for like three or four years straight. I think it's because of the whole Astro World thing that happened at the oh, concert. That's yeah. That's why he hasn't released anything. But that was like 2020, what, 2022. Maybe I, I don't really know. It was know. after COVID, right? I think. I, I don't really know. I it was definitely was. But that's why though. Yeah. I mean the dude literally had lawsuits and stuff. Because people died at his concert, so he's not obviously not gonna like wanna create any headlines until things clear up. So yeah, that's but it. dude, like think about it. Twenty fifteen rodeo. Yeah. Twenty sixteen was uh Bees in the Night or whatever that album's called. Great album. Um, 2017 was when he had the collab pr tape with um, Quavo. 2018 yeah. was Astro World. 2019, I think that was when he did um, whatever project is on. I think it's called Scott Boys or something like that. The one that has oh. like Out West, like yeah. that album. Yeah, like, that album's like. Yeah. I think it's more of like a mixtape. Yeah, it was a. Mi it was like yeah. But bro, that's five straight years. Of a project. No, he, he really. Oh, you know what? We forgot about the newer one that came out like a year Tokyo? ago. Yeah. But I'm saying like there was a gap between. Oh, like there was a gap. Yeah, yeah, true. But. Yeah, yeah, Utopia wasn't bad. So I think we're going to be. I think the music game is going to be eating good for a while. We'll see. We'll see. It has been a while since anything, you know, crazy came out. It has been a while. Well, I mean, bro, if we get a couple weeks stretched there, well, well what's going to happen is whenever Kendrick drops. Every other major artist is gonna like push their push their shit back because yeah. you're not gonna bro. People aren't gonna fucking care if if like bro. Respectfully, if you drop the same day as Kendrick, yeah, you're I'm not definitely that. listening to Kendrick yeah. first. Yeah, because yeah. I'd Everyone love does. to hear what he is gonna say on this album. <laughs> I mean, he could go in now. He could start just telling the truth about everything now because now it's open. You know, he could talk about the music industry. He could talk about everything. So hopefully he, he does, does that. Oh my god! I want a seven-minute song of like euphoria. Mm. Like, I, don't get me wrong. I understand why he does like the projects where it's like an entire body of work where he tells a story and everything. Yeah. But I'm like, dude, I want you to just snap. I want family ties, Kendrick. 
I like the I like melodic Kendrick. I like tell the story like you know stuff that makes you think and be like wow, shit. But I also want Kendrick where you could tell he's mad. You could tell he's pissed and he's like I mean I'm saying this with my chest. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was like the last album he produced. He kind of, I don't know. He was ta- he was he was kind of going after something. I don't remember what it was. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Yeah, like I throughout think he was that, more of it like... was kind of like it. I don't know. Some do with the U.S. and shit. I don't know that album. I was kind of like, what the fuck? But when he started releasing stuff about Drake, I was like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing because he can he can point out some things about people that, like that are bad, like Drake, and just you know, put them on a pedestal, like, put take them off of a pedestal, I should say. So that's good. Um, but yeah, Kendrick's just a great producer, you know. His beats are amazing. His Lyrically, we've been talking about him, just insane. So good at rhyming. And, uh, yeah, he's probably the best rapper in the game right now, I would say. Easily. Yeah. But... He, uh, he it was not... I don't a, know if anyone's at his level. It was not Cap when he said... Fuck the big three. Yeah, it's just big me. Yeah, like there's really. But th- do you think rap's just dying though? I, think I don't it think is. so. I think rap has an age problem. I think we're in a. I think we're at a point where music, because every generation has a different style of music. You know, every decade, even you could say, decade's probably a better way to say it. Like I know we go back to our parents with rock, and then you know there was like moving fast forward to like '90s grunge music. Yeah. You know. Like Go early 80s to, was classic rock, 90s yeah, was grunge, early 2000s, 2000s was, was like, like rock, rock. I like wouldn't punk, say that. I would like say like rock. Justin Timberlake stuff, though. I like would say punk rock slash pop. I would say pop more because that's okay. like Justin Timberlake. That's like the begin. That's like the prime of like Jay Z, too. So you could say some rap. Hmm. Um, but I think rap really took off like towards the end of that decade and the beginning of the 2010s but yeah i, I just think that so. rap i just think that rap has an age problem like age as in the people listening to it no age as in like there's nobody that ha- and i i know i'm gonna i brought this up in previous podcasts but what is this generation's big three you know like we Our are generations growing, no like or- the the, the next. next generation's big three. Oh, I like, don't know. For instance, I don't know clue. I say ours is J. Cole, Drake, and Kendrick. Yeah. Those three rap, dominated. Yeah. yeah. This generation, it easily and without a doubt would have been Pop Smoke, Juice, and X. And all three of them are dead. God bless. So I don't I just think that there's nobody that has that same, you know, I, I always say to people, I'm like, I just I wish and I'm I'm thankful for like our age group and our I guess generation where yeah. our known rappers didn't pass away. Yeah. The age groups below us, they don't have that same thing. Like, you know, I was talking to my cousin about this and he told me that like, you know, it's hard for him to get into like that earlier style rap and everything, and I'm like, I was the same way too. But they don't have anyone that like that that oomph, you know. Well, there. That's why I think the whole like genre of music popularity wise is changing now. I don't think it's rap anymore. That for younger I, people. That and I also think that everybody wants to chase this TikTok fame, and everyone wants their fifteen. That's the seconds. thing too. You have. It's not even fifteen minutes anymore, bro. Well, it's that's how you advertise seconds. stuff. That's how you advertise music and, now. And it's like, dude. Why would you? Why wouldn't you take advantage of that? Though? And like, brother, for the love of Jesus Christ. I don't understand why every song can never be longer than three minutes. It blows my mind. I'm like, brother, why? Why? I mean, Uzi I could be wanna... culprit of that too. Let's be honest. Yeah, but Uzi has songs that he are has longer, some that are long, but are then he has some like... that are like two minutes that are amazing. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm saying Uzi's not. Uzi's not. You know, not. He not, he does not both. Guilty of he this. does both. Yeah. But but like, dude, I just well, I miss the days when you got a rap song and it was like. You got an intro, a chorus, a verse, the chorus, another verse, and then the outro. Yeah. Not something where I get the intro, the chorus, one verse, the outro. Yeah, I mean, it's a different type of... It's just a different world now, like the way they make music, too. I also think rap, a lot of people are just doing the same thing. People don't, like, in general, people don't appreciate producers as much as much as they should. Like, I'm talking about the guys who make the beats, who make the, you know, who 
engineer the sounds that are in these songs, you name it. Like, those people need to be appreciated more, you know? So until then, they're, they're in the background, you know? Drake and Kendrick and all... I mean, Kendrick does some of his own beats, too. But they're just... They're the vo- the voice of these these sounds that we listen to. Yeah, we got the good lyrics, but like you were saying, lyrics aren't as good as they used to be. We don't have, you know, the Kendrick Lamars of the days like we used to. Um, but I don't know how... Mu- I think music nowadays is all about the sounds. It's not as much about the lyrics anymore. And, uh, you know who actually perfectly epitomizes what you said about like producers and yeah. like, rappers and everything? Gunna. How so? I think... Not think, but this is like my view of it. Yeah. When everything came out about Young Thug and him snitching on Young Thug or whatever the fuck happened, I don't really care to be honest with you. It's not my problem. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about it. I remember, you know, he had like this number one album and he had like a couple songs that were like blowing up. Yeah. Um, like what do you mean? You remember that song? Mm-hmm. Or fuck you mean? Um, yep. And I was like, dude, the guy makes his own beats. Lyrically, he's not bad. And he's still on. He's still doing good. And I remember saying to either you or someone else, I was like, "Gunna being blackballed from the rap game and everyone." I think it affects little baby more than most people understand. If you go back and look at old videos and interviews where Baby is talking about his relationship with Gunna, he talks about like Gunna will make him do verses over again. Gunna provides the beats. Gunna yeah. was his mentor and shit like that. And I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, dude. When Gunna snitched, it was 2022 or 2021, whatever it was. Little Baby's fall off happened to be around 2021, 2022. Curious. I mean, it's it? weird. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. Do you even think they're that good? Yes. You do? Yes. I could care less, honestly, they about their music. They are very much a dynamic duo, and their songs that, you know, have cultural weight to them. But I don't. They'll think never they make have another song again. Good music, though. I also think that's another thing that this rap game doesn't. They just that they currently. But doesn't that's have. my point with them. Is like they have one or two hits that everyone knows about, and then no one listens to anything else. At least I don't hear about anything else that's good. Meanwhile, you have people. There's, there's more, but well, they're probably well. That's just me, I guess, because I don't listen to them. But then you have people who either love or hate. Since we're talking about Lil Uzi, I'll use Lil Uzi as an example. Mm-hmm. You have people either love or hate, hate Lil Uzi. You know, and the people that love him listen to all his music. Agreed. The people that don't like him just don't listen. Yeah, but that's everyone who likes Lil Uzi. They love all the music he does. With Gunna and, you know, Lil Baby, it's like, oh, I like a few of their songs. You know, yeah. that's how I just think some of these artists are now. Like, you like some of their hits, you just don't like all their music, really. So I don't know. Did you know what I was that's listening to the other day? What? Glorilla. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yo, everybody's talking about like how this girl, how this woman doesn't, well, I mean, she's not, you know, her lyrics aren't about her, um, let's say physical attributes. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, all right, like, let me see. I, I go on, I'm putting on my beats and I'm like, I'm not going to lie. She's got a couple songs that are like, you know, you make, you make like the stink face where you're like, ooh, ooh. But anyway, um. Besides me, you know, liking Glorilla now, uh, dude. I was I, switching topics again. Um, I'm gonna beat your ass in, in Sparkling <laughs> Zero. Like I don't All think right, I don't think you understand. Listen, you think the you think you're at a certain level. I think I could get at your level, dude. Just give me just give me a month, bro, playing that game, which I probably won't get it right away if I do get it. But the thing is, bro, that skill gap in that game. Is huge. insane. There's All right? a ceiling. There's a huge. It's ceiling insane. In that game. So, I mean, that's a thing, dude. You're a little overconfident. You're a little overconfident, I think. No, the word you're looking for is cocky, <laughs> and I'm very cocky. All right, I want to see you then. What you play online a lot or no? I played online once. That's the only way you're gonna improve then. Because yeah. if I get the game, I'm only gonna be because, fucking play bro, online. Bro, the thing is, is that like I want certain characters. I need to play the story to get. Oh, okay, I get characters. that. I get that. So I'm like, well, how many do you unlock at the start? Because I know there's 180 characters. You know, it's uh, there's got to be at least like a hundred you yeah. can play at the start. Like all the ones that are like, so I got I pre-ordered the game. So certain versions of characters I already have, like 
Um, I would say probably out of the. I don't want to give you a bad number, but I'm going to end up giving you a bad number. I mean, just estimate. If estimate there's a, let's say for argument's sake, there's 200 characters. Yeah. They probably give you 80 off rip. Okay. I mean, that's a ton. Who are you not? I mean, I don't know all the characters, but. A lot of like the villains you have, like the obscure guys, like you don't have the Ginyu Force. You don't have a certain version of Frieza, which nobody fucking cares about. I don't care about. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and be like, guys, they don't have Metal Frieza unlocked at the start. Yeah, I don't give yeah. a fuck about that. But um, who else? Obviously, uh, UI or the latest version of Goku, like you know, Master Ultra Instinct Goku, and like yeah. a few other things, and a lot of GT characters, characters from the movie, the movies that apparently aren't canon. Um. Damn, I wish I remember this. I don't. I don't remember. I just remember getting in there and just being like, "Okay, I need to become a god at this game." Mm -hmm. No pun intended. Dude, when I was growing up, though, the only fighting game. So I didn't play like Dragon Ball Z. Really, I didn't play any fighting games except Smash Bros. I played Super Smash Bros. because I my first console was a GameCube. So mm -hmm. anyone who owned a GameCube had Smash Bros. I mean, that was like the number one game to own. So I played that game, and then I got PlayStation 2. And the PlayStation 2, I didn't really get any fighting games. I got more sports games. So it's PlayStation 2, you know, PlayStation also had a crazy amount of exclusives. I'm pretty sure I had a few exclusives. I can't remember what I had now, but yeah. So Smash Bros. was the game I, I always played. So going to, like, a fighter like that... It's crazy, and I'm and I've played it before. Like I've played, you know, Budokai Tenkaichi three, um, great but game. it's a great game. But it's like all of them. going from the fighting games that are two D to the ones that are three D open world are just night and day. And that's why I think everyone likes you know this iteration of Dragon Ball Z games, especially like the the Tenkaichi games. It's because you don't have open world games that are that good. Same with Storm Four. You know, so they never release them as well. <laughs> like, when was it? Like, this has been, what, 20 years, bro? Since well, they released the last time we got it? a Budokai game. The last time we got a Dragon Ball game was Kakarot in twenty. But that was, but that wasn't, that wasn't the same gameplay, though. I wouldn't know. I didn't play it. It was, well, I bought sure it and it just sat on my It was like Street Fighter style. No, that was uh, Fighter Z. Oh, okay. Okay, so Kakarot then was... Like the Tenkaichi style, or no? I I wouldn't be able to tell you. I, didn't I don't. Play it. I'm assuming to be, it's not. To be blunt with you, I bought it drunk, and my roommate <laughs> ended up playing it more than I did. I'm assuming well, I was in college. Obviously, I'm but. assuming it wasn't though, because everyone's calling this well, I game. Xenoverse Two was really good too. Oh, okay. Like Xenoverse Two. The only knock about Xenoverse was the fact that there weren't a lot of characters in Xenoverse. Like Xenoverse probably had about fifty or sixty characters with DLC. Like. Probably more than that now that I'm thinking about it. But they had, like, characters that nobody wanted. Plus, yeah. the Xenoverse, Xenoverse had, like, the power scaling. But then when people started bitching about the power scaling and how they're like, how come when I play as Goten, I can't keep up with Broly? I'm like, because <laughs> Goten is a literal child and Broly is called the legendary Super Saiyan. <laughs> It's yeah. like putting the it's like putting the 07 Patriots against the fucking, you know, 2017 Browns and being like, why is this not fair? Yeah, I mean, what's cool too, I'm going back to Super Smash Bros. So that was the first ever game that had a competitive style gameplay, like competitive ga like um, tournaments mm -hmm. ever. Like there was no game that really had a comp scene before that game, believe it or not. So they had YouTube, um, on YouTube there's this documentary. I forget who it's by, but they do a docu, someone made a documentary about how uh smash bros created this whole competitive like video game stuff and it's so good dude you gotta check it out it's like uh send it to me i'll watch yeah it. it's it's there's multiple episodes but they're like they're pretty short they're like 10 minute episodes i think there's like eight of them or something so good and this is you watch this and you're like holy shit like this was this was filmed in like 1999 two thousand early 2000s like people Man. are starting this yeah it's cool so the you remember the og land cables yeah like you remember land, land parties but you remember all the places that used to have all like you it's just they're just places to play video games remember that terabyte. we had one yeah remember the one that was over here and no the one by uh, stop and shop now in that strip in the strip mall remember that one by us there's 
a supermarket and then there's a little like mall part you, you know in front of the supermarket it's like one of those things it's like one of those things where like you walk in and there's like shops on the right and then there's like shop right yeah. to the left of it yeah and they used to have this place where people would play video games and i never walked in there but it didn't even last that long it was probably only there for like a couple of years and that's literally how it all started like period like that's how video game competitive scene happened they'd have people show up to these tournaments and then they'd you know it would just be a bracket tournament system and man i miss that just being everything's online now and i'm not saying i'd be good at like competing in video games because i absolutely wouldn't be especially 1v1 video games but dude that is just how it should be bro you should like people who want to do this stuff just for fun we need more of those places again I think, because I, I think it's a niche I would thing. Love, I would love that. Even just going there to watch stuff, people who love video games, like that's cool. Just seeing people show up who are nasty at the games and just competing for money would be cool, dude. There was and it's a, just you know casual. There was a place. So um, when when I worked at the AJ's, that was like down there. Yeah, it was right next to a like. It was, I think the place was called like Level One Gaming or something like that. Excuse me. I think I remember the name of that. And I remember one day I walked in. I'll never forget this. I remember being like, <gasps> being like dumbfounded. Yeah. I walked in. They ordered like, they ordered like five or, they ordered like three, four pizzas. And they were like, oh, Nick, can you just go walk across the street? I was like, yeah, whatever. I walk in. I see like these, you know, group of guys that are all like sitting around two TVs and two, and like four of them are playing each other. So I was obviously curious. I walked up playing xenoverse oh wow two wow and i was like oh you guys playing xenoverse that's cool as shit like blah 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 they're like yeah do you want to join our tournament i went <laughs> exactly tournament? yeah i was they were like what time do you get off i was like 20 minutes they're like we'll save you a spot there was a guy there well yeah the best perfect cell player I have ever played against in my life. Yeah, dude, these people I are just was nasty. Like, I was, I literally remember I like he beat me. I think I played him in like the second round. He beat me, and I was like, "Bro, you're different." Yeah, you. And he was like, "Dude, I've been playing this game since it came out," and I was like, "Then again, it did come out three years ago." So yeah, I mean that's happens. that's how it all that's how it should be, man. Like, don't get me wrong, I enjoy the life that we have now when it comes to how easy it is to just play a competitive game against other people. Like, don't get me wrong. But there's also, like, not that human element to it. Exactly. You know? That's like, what I always it. say to people, I remember back in the day yeah. when people were actually, like, talking in-game. And if you did the one majorly broken thing, like, the best example I can think of off the top of my head is Modern Warfare 2. If you joined mm -hmm. a lobby and there was somebody noob tubing, everyone in the lobby, whether it was your team, mm -hmm. their team, Everybody's talking shit to this guy to the point where they'll stop when he switches <laughs> off the noob tube. Yeah. I remember that so – and it's like, dude, nobody does that now. Everyone would just want to bitch the developers and be like, you need to change this. You need to change that. How about you realize for a minute <clears throat> maybe you should talk to the player – to stop putting shit in the... And maybe that's just because it's called... No, no, but I but, agree. No, to stick with that... Dude, I'm so happy I, to know that, that Sparkling what? Zero is outselling Call of Duty, bro. Well, that, but that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop that. That's, that's always going to happen. That's the old news. Yeah, but no, I am I agree with that. Like, if we're, if we're talking about that topic where how players abuse shit, like, I almost am on the side of players abusing bad mechanics... To, like I'm almost on the side of like they're to blame more than the de developers. I don't know how you feel about that. Like, cause every game is gonna have bad mechanics. Like it's it's con it's gonna happen, but it's the players that abuse it that make it really stupid. And the fact that developers then have to patch that in order to just make the players stop doing it, I think's kind of like it's almost like there should be a gentleman agreement for a lot of these games, cause everyone's just playing them to have fun. Like, just forget about the competitiveness of stuff sometimes. And just play to have fun. That's why you go to these places no, to play no, these games no competitively. Because nowadays everyone thinks they're a pro gamer when they play online. Everyone, it's like, dude, everyone wants down. to chase that clip. Like that's the reason why I stopped yeah. playing Call of Duty because all well, yeah. these guys, you know, it used to be it used to be people played for fun. Bro, there are times in like multiple games that I played where I'm like, dude, I think I've said this to you before, and maybe I've said it on the podcast or whatever. But what's the point? And having 50 different guns in a Call of Duty game, if people only are going to use five to seven of them, what's the point? 
Yeah, because people everyone... are like, oh, I want more, I want more, I want more. What the fuck is the point of having more if you're not going to use the more? And like the people that make the videos on this stuff, we've talked about this for sure. But the content creators that go out of their way to there's expo- the best class set up to drop, to do whatever you want to do and get kill streaks. And it's like that in every game though. The content developers that go out of their way to to clickbait the shit out of their out of their content to make people do stupid stuff in game, use stupid mechanics in game, are ridiculous, bro. Why can't content developers be how they used to be when we were younger, where it's all about entertainment, Fortnite. everything, Fortnite. And- Fortnite is one of the best games ever made when it comes to entertainment because people were creative with it. That's when it changed. No, but Fortnite never had a meta. But they had metas, don't get me wrong, but they changed the metas in terms of guns. But my point is, is like content creators that made content on video games used to just do it purely at entertainment. They didn't care about the competitive, competitiveness of games. It's to- totally flipped now. It's all about competitiveness for games, and even if it's the dumbest game ever. The World Cup. The World Cup for Fortnite is what changed all of that. Yeah, but that was a one-time once deal, pe- too. Once people realized how much money they could make gaming instead of just having fun, that's when it changed. Yeah. Like, I bro, agree. I don't see people, like, whenever I play s and I don't see people going for Ninja Diffuses anymore. Yeah, that shit's funny. Bro, I remember there was I one time, that. I don't remember what game it was. Yeah. It might have been Battlefield 4, but I was playing, I was playing with Rob. And Rob and I had a blast literally standing in our spawn with our C4s and just, you know, running suicide bombs with the cars. We'd wait for our car to spawn, and then we'd be like <laughs> – and we'd drive around, maybe just try to, you know, and drive jump into out somebody and, then, yeah. and just be like, oh, there's a squad over there. We'd go and just, like, get out and just be like – and be like <laughs> – and we try to we try to get it as close as we can for, like – because there was something in Battlefield 4 where, like, if you just clip them – as they blew up, it would ragdoll them upwards. Yeah, that's funny. So you'd want, I would want to do that. Rob and I literally spent an entire game getting no kills. I think between the two of us, we got like five or six kills. Dude. But we were having so much fun. Oh, it was so funny. The best part would be with like we would miss. And then I'd be like, Rob, I'm running back. And I'd run all the way back to spawn. And the next thing you know, a sniper would just like <laughs> kick me in the back of the head out of like left field. Yeah. But – there's no more of that, it's another bro. Another franchise, that bro. Just me and fell Rob, off. me and Rob went on. No, not me and Rob, but somebody. I think it was me and Dan. Me and Dan went on Battlefield. The new one. Yeah, it was either battle. It was either Battlefield Five or Battlefield Twenty Forty Two, and I tried to do that, and I was like, bro, the blast radius on this shit sucks. I can't kill anybody. Yeah, it sucks. Bro. Nah, the old games are great, man. That's another franchise. I need a bad company two. I need a bad company three game. I need a game where it's more about the explosions and the levolution rather than, oh well, you want to get this, you want to get this version of this sniper rifle because the reticle is better. I don't give a fuck about that. Let me have fun in these games again. Yeah, it's stupid. It's it's all about just, I don't know. I'm not gonna lie. It's like walking away from a lot of these like massive multiplayer games. It's been great. I mean, I get yeah. I don't have to sweat my nuts miss off. Them, my you know, whatever. You know, we, that's the thing. It's like man, it's now depressing. you have to though. It's just depressing, man. Well, they incor- a lot of these games incorporate skill based matchmaking yeah. stuff, but there's in no general, love. There's in no love, there's no there's no effort, there's no like everyone's just you know there's a higher up standing over the developer saying make sure you have this in the game. Well, it's a monopoly now. Doing. I mean, it's a monopoly. You got big big companies running this stuff. Yeah. Not small developers no. working for big companies. It's big developers working for big companies. You know, so it's just it is what it is. I just I just miss the aspect of when a game's competitive, let it be competitive. When a game's non-competitive, let it be fun. And that you know, there's eighty percent are non-competitive, twenty percent are. But exactly. now it's now it's eighty percent aren't competitive, but a hundred they're making it a hundred percent of the time to be competitive when they shouldn't be, you know, they're just making them competitive for no reason. Yeah. That's my point. It's like, dude, there just needs and to be balancing everything. Like, I understand you want your game to be balanced and blah, blah, blah. And I had this problem with apex. I always would say, if you have a BR, like let's take apex, for example. Yeah. BRs being competitive is a joke, by the way, it's yeah. a joke. You should have fun in those. For so a- period. I said with apex, I was like, I don't understand why every single season they take the guns with the lowest 
with the lowest pick rates and just buff the shit out of them. You know, What's could you the point? imagine? Could you imagine if like season two they were like, all right, guys, we're tired of the peacekeeper and R three hundred one being in the being in the thing, so we're gonna nerf them in the ground and we're gonna make it to where the yeah, the Mozambique who asked and for that, though, the you know? whatever. No, but like something where it just it shakes up the meta. It makes more oh, you like it. different things. I guess so. I just think it's everything should be OP. Make everything OP. Then you don't have to change anything. Oh, Modern Warfare 2. That's my point. That game will never... That remaster, Modern Warfare 2 rema- multiplayer remastered, will never see the light of day. Oh, did we ever talk about that? I think so. That yeah. will never see the light of day. Yeah, it got shut down in a day. Yeah. It's a shame. I was so ready to play that. Me too. Some people were able to I, still play it. I always would it say it's not like, going to play the same way that we remember it because of the fact that the caliber of player now is not the same caliber of player back I kind of agree with you. Every single person is going to pick up the Barrett and be like, oh, I'm just going to spam all the time with this. People are going to love the intervention. And, bro, you're going to be able to tell who's new at the game and who's not just by their perk setup. No one's new to that game. Everyone playing that game played it in the past. Modern Warfare 2? Like, if they were... What about all the kids that were, you know, fucking infants when the, when the game was, in its, when it was in, in its prime? No, I'm just saying, like, the people that were going to play the remastered version that those that grew made... We're all people that played oh, it. Oh no! In the all past. the Call of Duty heads, all the Call of Duty heads that will buy two games of the year, in the entire year and be like, "Gaming is so dead." No, gaming's not dead. You just buy the most, the two most dog shit games. It's like when I, it's like whenever I see like people make these videos on TikTok where they like they look at the camera and they're just like, "Gaming is dying," and I'm like, "Hmm, let me see." I get their see, point though. Let me see your games that you're playing. Oh wow, you're playing Call of Duty, Multi- NBA, yeah, they're 2K. playing multiplayer games. No. Call of Duty, oh, NBA 2K, Madden. I'm like, wow. So, but those games used to be good, though. Like we can agree on that. Ten years ago, bro. Nothing has changed with a lot of these games. All the sports games are the same. Same thing with Call of Duty, bro. I don't understand why we still do yearly releases. They're cash grabs. It is yeah, blatantly obvious. But no fucking nobody that buys these games is gonna sit there and be like. Huh. No, they're going to buy the game, love it for two weeks, realize what's wrong with it, and then bitch to the developers for the next six months. Then the developers are going to change one little thing. Everyone's going to be like, oh, it's so back. And then nobody's going to want to fucking care well, about the game anymore. No, but let's go back to what I was saying earlier. Is like you have the people who abuse the mechanics in video games that developers didn't initially intend on adding. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that's a problem in itself. So you have the people that abuse the bad mechanics. Back in the day, every game had bad mechanics, so people would just have fun with it anyway, and not nece- and they would complain but have fun because there was not there was no changing it, you know. There was bad mechanics, and no one would nothing would happen. You just had to deal with it. Nowadays, like you said, people complain, developers change it. That's the problem with nowadays with games, is that yes, they're not as good as they used to be, but people abuse the mechanics more than they ever have, because and. Because now there's two sides of it. There's the people that are able to complain about it and get the get it to be changed. While back in the day, it didn't matter if you complained about it because it was never going to change. People are louder. People are louder. There's now, bigger so. voice now. Like that's why there's no balance in games anymore. Because the people who hate the hate the mechanics that get abused are able to get them out of the game now. When back in the day they weren't. So everyone was able to work around it. Mm. So that's why I think there's a problem. And another thing, too, you look at the under, younger generation that plays, like, the Maddens, the 2Ks, the Call of Duties. They're going to like the games, though, because just like us, we played these games at our infancy, and we enjoyed them. They're playing these games at their infancy, and they're going to also enjoy them and look back and be like, oh, that game was good. It's just it's just a cycle, I think, you know? Break the cycle. I mean, we we, as older people... Older people. We is our oh, no, twenty mid twenties. No, 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 bro, we're we're we're, we're unk. We we are as the kids would say, we are unk status. All right, all right. Well, you know, don't grow, don't get any gray hair too early. Mm, but yeah, <laughs> but anyway, like we're it's just all generations have opinions on games, like and it's just it is what it is. Yes, the games were better older, like when we were playing them as kids. They were objectively better because, like I said, we. There was no real competitive urge in all these games. But nowadays, it's crazy. And Fortnite has to do with that, too, like you said. So it's it's just a big cycle. I, for one, like sports games still because it's nostalgic, and I like sports. 
So I just have to deal with it. And then there's me on the other hand, where I hate all sports games, <laughs> and I and I'm sitting here telling you how much you did. Like you did. Like I was just about to football. say. I was just about to say. I bought college football this year, and I was ta- I was actually talking to somebody about it, and I was like, dude, college football is the first sports games sports game I bought since I think 2K18. I was like, bro. But you know why? You know why it's good? Seven years ago. You know why it's good, though? Because it was the first college football In game. 10 years. I will in not be getting... 10 years. I will not be getting made, college football 26, by the way. Because it won't be good. Exactly. It'll but be the this same is the, game, just rehashed. But th- then we just figured out the problem here. You having these every year, re- you know, releases is just... It's bullshit. Like, that's... College football proves that. So let's get rid of it. College football proved it. 10-year gap. They make an amazing EA game, which we never thought was going to happen. I mean, I didn't play it. It's probably like... Some people probably don't think it's amazing, but it's oh, college. It's okay, good. So then, EA just proved their point right there. Let's but stop I don't, making I don't games play every college year. football for like the ultimate team. I can yeah. care less about all that shit. It, but the gameplay like is the good. Mode. You like the gameplay though. Okay, that's what that's what matters in my I opinion. I do love I do love hearing Mo Bamba every single third. <laughs> uh man, but yeah, I think at the end of the day, people need to stop abusing mechanics. That'll su- that'll that'll make people realize that it's just a game like at the end of the day because you abuse mechanics just to win i mean period it's the way you do it but not every game is competitive dude like that's just how it is man i feel like we're gonna get into i feel like we're gonna get into a deep discussion if we keep talking about this plus i mean yeah i'm fucking starving <laughs> all right well let's wrap it up i mean we'll we'll talk about this more in the future for yeah. sure honestly let's wrap it up yeah well it's been real it's been real stay beautiful my people i'm not gonna sit here and tell you all this other shit that i was i've always been sitting here telling you but you know at the end of the day do you and stay beautiful (laughs) peace